then at the opening when you know the camera goes away from the house and we see that there is that sign I mean I know it's already meant to be ironic but did anybody else just feel like singing cuz he's got high hopes I love the real estate agents reaction to that dark shadow that's probably an apparition you know it's like ghost please don't blow my sail okay just there's there's no like uh oh what's that it's just like ah oh, come on this is the death house I gotta move this thing I quite like the priest when he you know, goes back after the really over-the-top fly attack there. You know, the look on his face, you know, Melissa George standing there, come on, come back, why are you, why are you leaving so suddenly? He's just like, bitch, you are on your own in this one. That, yeah. When did Ryan have time to build all those coffins? The change of the whole Indian burial ground thing with now, you know, torture of these Native American Indians. Not sure it was necessary, but I do think it was a pretty good... I mean, in the on the DVD they talk about, you know, human horror is worse than supernatural horror. And I would have to agree. I mean, that was one of the scariest things. People have actually done this stuff, you know. People have actually done horrible torture to one another. And, you know, this, this also kind of made sense as far as, you know, they really have a reason to be pissed off at the residents of the house. You know, it's, they didn't just, like, die or something. They, you know, have serious grievance. I have no idea how slitting your throat would somehow make you live forever. I didn't think it was necessary to have all that many different ghosts. And I especially didn't get what the heck the point was of showing ones that the characters don't see. I mean, there's the kid going to the bathroom, and then there's one doing the, you know, big boo face, and the kid never sees him, or it. So what's the point? I mean, and, and, and when George goes in, there's like something holding, I don't know, is it Jody up there in the ceiling? It's just, what was the point of the bit with Jody there at the end, you know, getting grabbed and pulled down, and then the teddy bear remains, you know, was there some sort of... She was already a ghost. I mean, I did hear in the Might Have Been Commentary track that they thought of that as sort of setup for maybe sequel, you know, because she's still there and the teddy bear. I don't know. Reynolds mentioned a prequel instead, seeing more of what happened to the with the DeFeo family? I don't know. Would that also be in 28 days? I mean, these seem to be in 28 days. It's kind of like a menstrual cycle. And at the end there, what was the point of that whole ghost montage thing? I mean, weren't there two there? I mean, there was the one where it's leaving George's body, and then there was one afterwards, like after the, you know, text thing preceding the credits that told us, you know, they left and never came back, you know, they ran out of there in a speedboat. I don't know, I guess they really wanted to spice that up so they didn't just use the car like in the original. I thought Chloe Moretz on the roof was quite effective, very scary. 
you know, suddenly she's just up there and she's there at the very edge, you know, and just being a little girl and not realizing the kind of danger she's in and you know, Reynolds climbs up, ah oh, crap, I can't go that way, you know, and the mother comes up there and grabs her and then no and you know, can't hold on to her, Ryan catches her. That whole thing really worked. I mean, maybe I deep down knew that they're not gonna kill a little girl in a mainstream movie just like this. But it worked. I I don't know who to give most credit to, the director or the editor, but that worked and so did several other things. I mean, the finger through the forehead of Jody, you know, the nanny there, that worked. That was genuinely creepy. I mean, it's one thing that she just grabs her finger and the nanny can't seem to, you know, pull it back or maybe she just didn't have to fart, I don't know. And then it goes into her forehead. That really worked. I mean, if that happened to me, I would be banging on the door. I thought George was quite threatening when he picked up the girl and when he threw her back into Kathy's arms there at the end, you know, before with the shotgun. And then, you know, Billy. Tommy from the Butterfly Effect, trying to keep, you know, George from breaking open the door. You know, again, we have this, you know, the confrontation between them that was bound to happen, you know. And you also have, you know, he's punished and disciplined by George, you know. He doesn't admit to stealing the keys because he didn't do it, and then he has to drag those huge logs, you know. And then later, the... He has to hold the logs while George chops them, you know. That also really worked well. But then there at the end, you know, he's, you know, the man of the family, holding back the danger until the rest can escape, you know. He's protecting them, possibly even sacrificing himself. And George keeps seeing him as this sort of demon thing, you know. Like when he was sitting down in the basement watching footage that they shot a couple of weeks ago. I thought that you usually look back on that like a couple of years after, not just a couple of weeks ago. I mean, if he wants to be with them, can he just put on a really warm jacket and go be with them? Anyway, and then when, you know, the kid is out there and he's just about to hit him and, and he, you know, pokes at him with the end first and then turns around and then, just at the, in the nick of time, Kathy gets you know, him down on the ground, and there's that whole thing, and, and the sort of dream sequence that he has of chopping her in the stomach. I will admit, I bought that hook, line, and sinker. I was completely convinced. I was like, I can't believe they actually did this in a ho Hollywood mainstream movie. The guts to do that, and, and then, you know, it reveals it was just like something he imagined, and he's like, kill me, kill me, or I'll kill you, and then she's like, nobody's gonna die today, and you know, that whole thing just worked really well. I can see an argument for there being too many dream sequences in this, but what I like about it is, that one you could tell, okay, that was a dream sequence, but isn't that kind of the only thing that you're sure is just a dream sequence? I mean, there was that other one where he saw the dude slit his throat and, you know, he got blood splatter on his face and his body, he kind of took the whole you know, blood bath kind of thing, a little too literally maybe. You know, was that actually a dream or? I like that in the commentary track when we see that. You know, they ask him, did it actually taste bad? And I was kind of figuring that what he'd respond because they probably still use just like caro syrup. You know, and he said, no, you know, it had kind of a sweet taste. And, you know didn't mind if I accidentally swallowed some. I actually had a glass of it the other day. Very funny guy. When he's allowed to be. And I liked that in this one there actually was a kind of
there, there was something that had to be done before George became normal. You know, you had to get him away from the house. That makes sense. It was the house that started that whole thing, you know. And that just really worked. You know, they're, they're getting away from there and, you know, that whole thing, you know, he sits up and just before we hear him say, urge to kill rising, we find out that he is indeed okay by now, you know. This one also does a much better job at the get out voice. Maybe they watched that Simpsons episode. I suppose that is more or less it. About the DVD, it's got a making of featurette, it's okay, it's got some kind of fun stuff, you know, you see the children talking, for example, and Jody is much less frightening once you've seen her dance. They, they go into how they did the Moretz, you know, standing on the roof thing. They go into that in a nice amount of detail. That was kind of cool. There are, I think, eight minutes of deleted scenes with optional commentary by Ryan and, I guess, the producers or something. And he's funny, yet again. A full-length commentary by Ryan Reynolds and the producers. Funny and interesting. and a thing called Supernatural Homicide, which is basically just sensational piece of dribble trying to remind us of the whole case back in the 70s, or the two cases, I suppose. And it doesn't even really bother to properly retell the supposed events, only really the ones that also happen in this one, and that's not a lot. And it sadly gives more attention to Lorraine Warren, who also appears in the History's Mysteries episodes on the first film. She says something to the effect of the greatest protection the devil can have is a skeptical public. How about this lady? The greatest protection, power-hungry, bigoted, supposedly religious people, it doesn't even really matter if they're religious or not, that try to take over religion can have is an unquestioning public. And if you'll excuse me, I consider my concern to be far more valid and pressing than yours, which frankly bother, bar, borders on paranoia. I'm not afraid of your red boogeyman, Warren. There's a photo gallery and we get nine on-set looks amounting to 21 minutes and these play during the movie so you can choose to play the movie with them and the movie will occasionally stop and you'll see some behind the scenes footage of the scenes you're about to see or have just watched and that is it So, those are my thoughts on 2005's The Amityville Horror. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you.